Well, good evening, everyone. Merry Christmas Eve to you all. Uh, we're so thankful that you're in worship with us today. Uh, so thankful that you are choosing to start Christmas this way. Um, and so we invite you to stand and sing with us as we proclaim that Jesus has come to this place. Christ. And I uh, want to let you know that our worship schedule right now 
is a little bit different. It's changed just a little bit. It's going to be 8.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. And that's beginning um, January 10th. Um, in the meantime, we're going to quarantine right after Christmas. Um, and that's going to be on uh, December 27th and January 3rd. We're going to have online services only. And that'll be at 8.30 a.m. and at 10 a.m. on our regular uh, platforms that we, where we share our worship services. So on Facebook, on our website. So we invite you to join us online for December 27th and January 3rd. And then on January 10th, we'll be in person at 8.30 and at 10 a.m. So we welcome you. And we'll also be online at 10 a.m. on those Sundays from January 10th on. This evening, we have a manger offering, um, so we're going to be bringing our offerings forward. Actually, during this next song, we're going to take our offering a little bit early in this service. And our manger offering is a special offering tonight for Loaves and Fishes, which provides food for many in our community um, who are in need of food assistance. And that, that has been growing recently. The need is great. So if you're able to give, we encourage you to do so. Um, if you're here, you can place that in the offering. And, and if it's a check, you just make it out to Light of Christ. And then in the memo line, you can write loaves and fishes. If you're watching online, you can give to this special offering, but give directly to Loaves and Fishes. So we encourage you to visit their website, which is loavesandfishes.org. And you can give a gift there to support their important ministry. So thanks so much, and feel free to bring your gifts up and lay them in the manger if you have one to give. Amen. Will you stand with us and continue worshiping? Yeah. 
righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mighty lays his glory by, more than let more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to Good morning. 
My name is Dara Rickles, and this is my son Luca and my daughter Zan. Today we celebrate Christmas Eve and the coming of Christ. During Advent, we have prepared our hearts and lives for this day, when the time was fulfilled and God gave his son to the world. He did so in surprising humility, condescending to become one of us. The prophet Isaiah foretold what the arrival of the promised Messiah would mean when he proclaimed, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of this greatness, of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Today we light the first candle on Advent Wreath, symbolizing our hope in Christ. The second candle, symbolizing the peace Jesus gives. The third candle, to express good joy in Christ's coming. The fourth candle, for the same the love of God. And on Christmas Eve, Eve we light the Christ candle because Christ has come. Christ has come, and God is with us. Let us pray. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. God with us. God with us. You have given us the perfect Christmas gift. You have given us the perfect Christmas gift. Yourself. Yourself. We receive Christ in our hearts. We receive Christ in our hearts. And lives with joy. And lives with joy. Empower us to live out of gratitude. Empower us with, to live out with God. Shining the light of Christ. Shining the light of Christ. In a dark and lonely world. In a dark and lonely world. We commit our lives to your service. We commit our lives to your service. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So beautiful. So grateful to the Rickles family for sharing with us. And even our Advent wreath has been turned outward this year. <laughs> We're, it's just amazing what a different kind of Christmas it's been. Uh, today we light the Christ candle because Christ has come to us at Christmas. And uh, we conclude today our Advent series, which is Christmas Turned Outward, and we've hoped to be a blessing to our community to find ways to address very real needs that are all around us. And in doing so, of course, as it always is in ministry, we ourselves have been blessed. That is the way it goes when we are serving the Lord. And uh, so there have just been so many ways that as we have turned outward and expressed God's love, that God is with us, that we have found uh, that God is with us. And, and we recognize that and thank God for that. Um, we've been blessed as we've served our homeless neighbor, uh, children around the world who live in poverty, and some of our senior adult neighbors right here in Ballantyne. And I want to especially thank our Ignite Student Ministry um, for leading us in that uh, effort, and Brittany Bethel and other adults who regularly work with our students because they really have chartered the, charted the path for us of turning Christmas outward. There have been some great moments along the way uh, with Christmas Turned Outward, but I think my favorite was on Monday night when we went Christmas caroling at Legacy Heights Assisted Living. There was a great group of us, and you can kind of see us in these pictures. Um, it was kind of dark when we were singing, of course, and uh, we ended up singing both in the front of the building where there were uh, several folks, several residents who were gathered there in the lobby, and they had you know, uh, brought the windows down so that they could hear us singing. But then we also ended up going around the back of the building because there were a few residents that had been exposed to a staff member who tested positive for COVID-19. So they were kind of holed up in their apartments and we were able to sing up to them um, through their windows. So we were able to be a blessing. But at the moment that was the best for me had to do with Austin Kreider in his Santa hat. Um, he was there, uh, two-year-old Austin was with us um, singing to the people sitting there in the lobby. And like I said, the windows 
were down, so it was a little chilly inside the lobby there. So the residents were wrapped up in uh, blankets that the staff had brought to them. And they had their masks on, and they were sitting back from the windows, but close enough that they could hear us. And so we were standing back from the windows because all that was between us and them was a, you know, a screen there in the window. But Austin didn't know anything about social distancing, so he just went right up to the windows and looked right in at the, the residents who were there. And he was saying, Merry Christmas, and going to the next window and ma- waving Merry Christmas. And the staff uh, told me the next day, they said, people just can't stop talking about you guys and the group that came out to sing. And I'm sure that part of that was Austin's very heartfelt Merry Christmas message uh, to them. So beautiful. God, God is good and showed us his love uh, in those moments together in ministry. Christmas turned outward. Re- we reach out because God first reached out to us. So today we turn to Luke chapter 2 and Pat Christ is coming to read that for us. Luke chapter 2, of course, is where we read the Christmas story. And uh, Pat is going to begin where the shepherds hear from the angels and then what happened after that. So beginning with verse 8 of Luke chapter 2. Let's listen for God's word for us. Good evening, everyone, and Merry Christmas. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those of whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at... (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Wasn't ready for a page turn. (laughs) What the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Said the night wind to the little lamb, do you see what I in the sky little lamb do you see what I see a star a star dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite with a tail as big Said the little lamb to the shepherd boy, do you hear what I hear? Ringing through the sky, shepherd boy, do you hear what I hear? A song. trees with a voice as big as the sea, with a voice as big as the sea.
said the shepherd boy to the mighty king do you know what i know your palace was mighty king do you know what i know a child Bring him silver and gold. Let us bring him silver and gold. Said the king to the people everywhere. Listen to what I say. Pray for peace, people everywhere. Listen to what I say. A child, a child, sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and light. Well, that's a song that was written at a time of crisis for our country, a time that was a very scary moment in our history. It was written in 1962 by a married couple named Noel Regney and Gloria Shane Baker. Um, they wrote this in October of 1962 in, in front of the holidays, and the lyrics are a plea for peace. Um, this was point, a poignant time in our country's uh, existence because it was during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, when the USSR was found to be constructing bases for nuclear missiles in Cuba. And these weapons had the ability to strike most of the continental United States. A very serious confrontation was only averted when our U United States president, John F. Kennedy, uh, insisted that they be dismantled. Well, years later, this couple who wrote this song was asked about that song in an interview, and they shared that at the time, neither one of them personally could sing the song all the way through without breaking down. They said it was such an emotional time. They said, our little song broke us up. They, you must realize, they said, there was a threat of nuclear war at that time. Well, since that time, this, the song has sold tens of millions of copies, it's been covered by hundreds of different artists. It was originally recorded in 1962 Christmas holiday season, and more than 250,000 copies were sold. But it was Bing Crosby the next year who made that song a worldwide smash hit when he recorded his own version for a Christmas album. And um, ironically, Bing Crosby recorded his vocals for that song on November 22nd, 1963, the day that President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas. The song, Do You Hear What I Hear, and also the gospel lesson for today, really shows us a, uh, a sharing of the message that went out um, at the night of Christmas, and also as described in the song, Do You Hear What I Hear? Um, there, in Luke chapter 2, we are told that the shepherds were watching their flocks by night and that this message came to them through an angel, one angel at first, who came to them. And they let them know, let the, the shepherds know that the one who had been born that night in Bethlehem was to be the savior of the world and was the expected Messiah. And it was enough to get a whole slew of angels in on the praising. So there was a multitude of angels that appeared then in the sky and sang glory to God and peace to all on earth on whom God's favor rests. And it was enough to leave the shepherds, who were not very religious folk, to say, we have to go and see what they're describing. 
And so they did. Luke tells us when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. So it's like the words of that song. Do you see what I see? Do you hear what I hear? Do you know what I know? Listen to what I say. There's a progressive sharing of the good news in the song. And that's very much the same way that it happened with the shepherds. They had to tell. It's, it was one of those moments where they had to say to people when they came in contact with them, you're not going to believe what happened. I mean, this was just incredible. And they knew that this was more true than anything they had ever encountered in their lives. There was more truth in that encounter with the angels and what the angels told them than anything else they had ever encountered in their lives. So even though they were not very religious people, they had to share that God is real, that God is with us, and that there's something special about this baby that's been born. We don't know exactly how it's all going to happen, but we know he's going to be the Savior, and he's the Messiah that everyone has been expecting. So they became instant evangelists, explaining to everyone that they had come in contact with angels, with the heavenly, and that what the angels had told them had been exactly true, and that was that they would find an infant lying in a food, in a feed trough. And sure enough, they went, and they followed their instructions, and they found this baby laying in a manger, which was for the animals. There was a ripple effect. One message led to another, passing it on, and until everyone was amazed, Luke tells us, by their message. Well, Sam Bethay is a messenger of God right here in the Charlotte area. Maybe you've seen him before in downtown Charlotte at the corner of Trade and Tryon. He regularly proclaims the good news about Jesus Christ. He's known in Uptown as the Jesus Saves guy. That's how people know him. His booming voice proudly proclaims, I've got good news. Jesus saves and he loves you guys. And he says that to everyone who passes him by. At 46 years old, Sam spends his time talking to people and proclaiming the good news. He's friendly, he's bold, and some call him crazy. And he says, I am crazy, but I'm crazy for Jesus. Sam has frequented the heart of Uptown at that same corner, Trade and Tryon, for six years now. Above all the hustle and the bustle and the noise of Uptown... His, his voice can be heard, heard booming from several blocks away. When you ask Sam about his story, he'll tell you that he came from a broken home. He had a single mother who raised him, and she had to work all the time to support the family. And so what he would do is he would hang out in the streets. And he said that's where the girls were and that's where the weed was. And so he ended up getting in a lot of trouble over the years And sadly, ended up in and out of jail 29 times in a 10-year period, from the time he was 16 years old until he was 26. But there was a moment in 1999 where he came back to faith in God, and he began to hear God's call to preach the good news full-time. Well, he didn't know what that meant, and he was afraid of that call, But eventually, God kept calling until he said yes. So he's been proclaiming the good news about Jesus ever since 2015. Now, as you can imagine, he gets plenty of naysayers, plenty of people who want to argue with him, plenty of people who even want to fight him. But he just keeps on being friendly and sharing the good news, sharing that Jesus loves you, and sharing his own story about what God has done for him. Um, In a recent interview, he was asked why. You know, what's his motivation? Why does he do what he do, spending what he does, spending all this time in Uptown sharing about Jesus? And he had a profound statement in response. He said, what every corner you find yourself in, brighten the corner you're in. Light it up. I love that message because all of us can apply that. Whatever corner we're in, we can brighten it. We can light it up. In the first chapter of the Gospel of John, John discusses the impact and the meaning of Christmas, this holy day. 
And John compares Jesus to light. He talks about Jesus as the light of the world, which, of course, Jesus himself, uh, he called himself the light of the world. He also called us the light of the world, his followers. And John has this to say about Christmas and Jesus as the light. He said, The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. And John also says this, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Well, that is something we need to hear this Christmas, that the light of Jesus cannot be overcome by darkness, but still shines. And the light of Christ shines in everyone who claims Jesus, who invites the Lord Jesus in and invites the Lord Jesus to live through us. So tonight we are going to light our candles which represent the light of Christ. And we're actually going to share um, that light with each other. And we light, we'll light our candles from the Christ candle, which represents that his presence is with us and that Jesus has come into the world. And as we share, we're going to sing Silent Night. And we're going to pass this light through the sanctuary, and we need to stay as spaced as we can, um, socially distanced as possible as we share the light. And also, um, if you are lighting your candle, if you could be the one to tilt your candle, any, any candle that is already lit you need, needs to stay upright so that we don't spill wax everywhere, um, and we'll share the light. And for those of you who are joining us online, I know a number of you are, if you have candles that you can pull out and light at this time, we would love for you to do that um, as we sing. So uh, let us pray. Thank you, God, for the light of Christ in the world. Thank you, God, for your presence in each one who claims Christ. Fill our hearts with your presence, we pray, this Christmas. Give us hope, give us peace, give us joy and love. And God, as we light our candles from your light, we recognize that it's only because of Jesus that we can be the light of the world. And we want to share that uh, with all we come in contact with this Christmas. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.
There we go. We wish you a Merry Christmas, and we invite you now to help us carry the light of Christ from this sanctuary to our new sanctuary, as we're going to sing uh, one more song with our candles in the sanctuary. Those of you, of you joining us online, you'll be able to follow along with us um, on this broadcast, so you can join in on our first song in our new sanctuary. So we celebrate that. Um, if you are visiting with us for the first time, we would love for, to know a little bit more about you. You can visit um, locumc.org slash connect and sign in. Tell us a little bit about you so that we can connect with you. And also, if you have a prayer request to share, um, we would love for you to visit our website and go to our prayer page. And you can see that URL on your screen. So you're welcome to share a prayer request with us as well, and we would love to pray with you and our prayer partners, all right? So let's go now. Let's follow Brittany into our new sanctuary. <laughs> 